school discussion on this morning. Let's have a word of prayer. God, our Father, the maker and creator of all things, it is once more again that we come before you on this morning. God, we come thanking you for last night's rest. We thank you, God, for watching over us all night long, and touching us this morning with the finger of love, found that we were still on this side. God, that we had one no more opportunity. We ask now, God, that you give us the heart and the mind to take advantage of these opportunities that you've given us. For each day is another day that we can praise your name. So we ask you to just continue to be with us, God, continue to protect us, continue to guide us. And as we go into this discussion, God, let us have us to know that when we study your word, we're doing your will. When we meditate on your word, we're doing your will. God, help us to always remember to give you the glory in everything that we do. So we thank you now and we praise your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen, amen, amen. Once again, it's time for our Sunday school discussion and to go over the words, to discuss the thoughts that God has given us on this morning. Today is Sunday, January 30th. 2022. Our unit theme for this month, our dwelling place. And once again, a reminder that our theme for the year is abiding in God. And, and all of these lessons have been centered around that. So we wrap it up today with today's topic, which is bear much fruit. The background scripture is John 15, 1 through 8. The key verse I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same shall bear as much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's John 15, 5. The essential question, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Lesson aims. At the end of this lesson, the participant will understand that we glorify God by bearing good fruit that you will be identified by the top type of fruit that you bear. And in order to bear good fruit, you must be connected to the vine. Our introduction. To bear fruit means to be successful after a lot of work and effort, to be productive, to get results. What happens to us when we are not productive in our jobs? The same thing happened to us as if we're not productive as Christians. If you're not productive in your job, you may get a few warnings that said you have to increase your production or you have to do a better job of whatever it is that you're doing. We get the same kind of warning in our Christian walk. When we're not doing things that God has assigned to us and when we're not living the type of life that we should be living as children of God, we get warnings. And the warning comes through the Word. And you, after you get a few warnings, then you know the next step on your job is to be fired. So I like the same result. If you, don't, if you don't change your ways as being a Christian or in your spiritual walk, the word fire comes into play again. This time we're talking about a different kind of fire. You get fired in the brimstone. And, and, and you know where that place is, the place that you'll be going to. So the results are the same. You must get results. You must do the things that have been assigned for you to do as a Christian. To the believers, being productive means that we must successfully carry out the mandate that is given to us by God through his son, Jesus Christ. The word of God tells us that when we are converted, we have an obligation to bring others to Christ. We are to seek out those who are lost. And as the Bible tells us in Luke 14 and 23, go out into the highway and hedges and compel them to come. That is what being productive is. One way we can accomplish this task is by glorifying God so others can see him in us and they may decide to accept him as their personal savior. Today's lesson is the conclusion of our series of lessons centered around our dwelling place. If we abide in Jesus, 
uh, topic for the year, our theme for the year, and make him our dwelling place, then we'll be able to bear much fruit. There's a connection there. And now for our exposition of today's lesson. The first point, we glorify God by bearing spiritual fruit. And we're going to be talking about our, our reference script for today's lesson, which is John 15, 1 through 8. In verse 1 of that particular chapter, it says that Jesus is the vine and God is the gardener. Every branch that does not bear fruit is taken away. And what that is telling us is that if you are not productive, as we were talking about earlier with your, with your job, you will, will, be, will be taken away. And being taken away in the spiritual sense, if you don't bear fruit, then when God comes to claim his own, then you know where you, where you are destined to go. And so it says the branch that don't bear fruit, it's going to be taken away. It's going to be handed over to Satan. Verse 2 says, Every branch that does bear fruit is pruned that they may bear more fruit. And if you have any experience with gardening, if you ever grown rose bush or a fruit tree, you know that when, when some of the fruit on the, on the branch begin to die, you cut some, some of those off so that the other one may produce. Because if you don't, then those small fruit will, will spoil the whole tree. So you cut back so that it may produce more. Verse 4 says, The branch cannot bear fruit unless it abide in the, vine, in the vine. So neither can you except you abide in me. In other words, you must stay connected. Jesus is the vine. And in order for you to bear fruit, you must be connected to him. Some examples of that, real life examples. Have you ever had an appliance that you tried to use and it wouldn't do anything, it would not come on, the light wouldn't come on? And then you look around and you find that it hasn't been connected to the outlet. That is an example of what we're talking about. It wasn't connected, so you didn't have any power. You can use another example of, of the automobile. If you go out and try to crank it and it doesn't say anything, then the, your first thought is, oh my goodness, my battery's gone and I gotta go buy a new battery. But then you open open the hood and you tinker around with it and in your tinkering you might have moved the cable and then you go inside and try cranking it again and it fires up. Why? Because the cable was not connected. And once you moved it, it, it connected. So then you had power. Same thing with, with being connected to God. As long as you connect it, you're going to have power and the power light is going to come on. This sometimes happens to people in the church also. Sometimes they, they lose connection. They're not connected. They're not plugged into the, to the outlet. Don't, don't, don't throw them out of the church. Don't, don't talk about them and criticize them. Just encourage them and give them, keep feeding them the word of God so that they can get reconnected because God is right there waiting for you to be connected. Verse 5. He that abide in me and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You got to be connected in order to get something done. Verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You have to recognize the power that you have. If you not, don't have what you think you need, if your life is not going the way that you want it to go, God said, ask me, ask me, and I will give you whatever you ask. Now, there is a caveat to that. He said, ask it in my name. So if you're asking for anything else other than to uplift the name of Jesus in order to make you a better Christian or a better person, then it may not be granted. But he says, if you ask it in my name, if you ask for the right reason, it will be granted unto you. Verse 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. If you bear fruit, two things are going to happen. Number one, God is going to be glorified. And the second thing is you're going to bear much fruit. So that tells me 
that if you're not bearing fruit, you must not be connected. The second part of our exposition, we're going to go to another passage of Scripture, and that is Matthew 7, 17, and 21. And this is going to kind of reinforce everything that we said from the 15th chapter of John in our first topic of discussion. But for Matthew 7 and 17, it says that every tree that brings forth good fruit, excuse me, it says that every good tree that bring forth good, will bring forth good fruit, but a bad tree brings forth bad fruit. And let's see if you can't clear up a misconception about this, because a lot of times people associate this uh, verse of scripture with the old expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's one of the first things we think about. But when we talk about that, we're talking in a worldly sense when it says the apple does not fall far from the tree. Because most of the time, this has a negative connotation. What we're saying is that if a person uh, does bad thing and does not live a godly life, commits a crime, whatever negative thing that person does, it is because of his parent. Because the parent being the tree and the child is the apple. They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But you know, just a little note here, you can also think of that in a positive way. Because if the parent brings the child up in, in the love and adoration of the, of the Lord, and it teaches the child the right way and the right things to do, and the child grows up and do the same thing, then that applies also. But that's not what we're talking about here in this verse 7, 17 of Matthew 7th chapter. What it's talking about when it says that every good tree will bring forth good fruit. The tree in this case is the person and the fruit is the work that they do. So it's saying that a good person, a person that's basically good, someone who's rooted and grounded in Christ, that they're gonna bring forth good fruit. But if it's a bad tree, the person that is of questionable character and does not live a godly life, it's a bad tree and therefore it's, their deeds are going to be bad. They're going to do bad things. Why? Because it's in them. That's what they know. They're going to do bad things. But a good tree, a good person, a godly person, is going to bring forth good fruits. Hope that cleared that up for, for some of you. The next verse is verse 19. Every tree that brings forth bad fruit is cut down and cast in the fire. And we know that what that means. If, if you bring forth bad fruit, if your deeds are bad or not acceptable in the eyes of God, you're going to be cast in the fire. And we know what the fire is. You're going to be turned over to Satan and his followers for an eternal damnation. You shall know them by their fruit. Because not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, this, this is verse 20 and 21. But everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only he that does the will of my Father shall enter. In other words, we should watch what they do and not what they say. Some people talk a uh, good game. They can talk holy. But then it says there that everyone who talks holy, who calls on my name, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do and not those who just say it. Our closing thought. The key to bearing much fruit is to realize that although I, I can't, he can. Jesus does not tell me to try harder, do more, be better, or act like I've got it all together. He asks me to do one thing, and that is abide in him and let him do the rest. Our lesson applied after listening to this discussion on today. As you meditate on it and think about the way that you live your life, the way that you talk, the things that you do, what is important to you and what is not, how you spend your leisure time. When you think about those things, your assessment of these actions will help you determine what kind of fruit you are bearing, which is our essential question. Remember, Scripture tells us that we should know them by their fruit. Does anyone know that you're a Christian, or do you have to tell them? Can they tell by your actions and by your deed, by the fruit that you bear? 
by the people that you bring into Christ? Can they tell that you're a Christian? Or do you have to wear a sign or a big cross around your neck? If you're bearing good fruit, you don't have to tell them who you are or whose you are. Something to think about. And we'll leave you with that. Thank you for joining us on this morning. God bless you. And continue to pray. Continue to lift up the name of Jesus. And we'll talk to you again soon.